If I could pick yes. someone to follow up Rick Stingle's Person of the Year, Ben Bernanke. Seriously. It would be this guest. It would be our next guest. Yes, Introduce him. I'm Republican excited. representative from Texas and member of the Financial Services Committee, Congressman Ron Paul, joining us on the set of Morning Joe. Nice to have you on. Sir. And Ron, yeah, thank you. you actually uh, you just wrote a book about the Fed. <laughs> I mean, my God. Uh, tell us. Yeah, off camera, you were telling me you think that Ben Bernanke probably deserves to be Person of the Year because of the power he has. He is. He's, he's the most powerful man in the world. I, I, I believe a case could be made for that. Hmm. Because he controls the supply of money, which is the dollar, which is the reserve currency of the world. He can create a trillion dollars in secret without any monitoring of the, uh, of the uh, Congress. So there's no transparency. And I think he's more powerful than a president. My well, the goodness. president, we were talking off air again, the president has all these checks and balances. Bernanke and every other Fed chief operates in secrecy, like you said, can create a trillion dollars out of thin air. Right. The big, the big question is, has he used that power for good or for evil? And of course, my side of the argument is the system is evil, mm. and the chairman, whether it's uh, Greenspan or Bernanke, uh, they can do no good. They cause our troubles, they cause the inflation, they cause the bubbles, and therefore, the bust, the correction, is always their fault. So the problems that we have and because this is such a, a worldwide phenomenon, you know, since 1971, everything has become worldwide, a global economy, no backing of any currency, and yet our Federal Reserve controls the, the gold, so to speak, with the paper gold. And therefore, uh, this whole mess that we're in, which is, has a long way to go, uh, has been caused by the Federal Reserve. All right, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. We just heard Rick Stengel say he saved us from the Great Depression. From the brink. We a trillion dollars here, three trillion dollars he pumped into the economy. Who was responsible, if you name one, two, three people or institutions, to take this country to the brink, greatest country on earth, to the brink of a depression? Well, the Federal Reserve, but there has to be. How? A, they will be by creating money out of thin air, causing interest rates to be low, causing the malinvestment, and causing an artificial uh, economic expansion that has to correct. Like build too many houses, eventually it crashes. Bernanke it gave us the disease and cured it both. Yeah, but there are other things that uh, contribute to it, like Congress having uh, laws that say you must make bad loans and give money to people who. By, by the way, I've got to interrupt your Pat, as you 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 read my book. Book, right. that, that quote by Ron Paul, and I remember the date, on September 10th, That's amazing. September 10th, 2003, and buy my book, or uh, just Google <laughs> September 10th, 2003, Ron Paul. Ron, in September of 2003, you predicted in the banking committee exactly what was going to happen in 2008. Word for word. To a T, word for word. And I read that, and people always say, are you making that up? You knew in 2003 what was going to happen. You're, you're better than I am. I can't remember the dates. I yeah. knew that was the position I've taken for years and right. years. And matter of fact, I was motivated to go into, into Congress and run for political office in the 70s because I understood the principles of malinvestment. But I, I didn't come up with these ideas. It's the Austrian economists and right. the uh, sound money people that said this would happen. And they were correct. Matter of fact, when the uh, Bretton Woods collapsed in 1971, that was the confirmation that Austrian economics were, that were on the right track. Buchanan, didn't you run afoul of some Austrian economists? Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> At some point. I said something about dead Austrian economists during one of my hey, debates. The Rockwell and the fellows have well, we have a few lives. Did, 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 did Rockwell <laughs> kill you? That was gone. Murray Rothbard, they were gone. He was but your friend. He was, no, he was my great friend, Murray was. But we slammed shut the gold window in 1971. I was with Nixon in August. That's what you're talking about. Your fault. But look, you know what they're going to do? They had all that money abroad, Ron. You asked me, the Brits were going to come in and clean out Fort Knox, what would you have done? Well, you should have done a lot more a lot sooner. That is, don't, print, with so, that. don't print so much money uh, look, prior to that. Look, it was guns and butter, but what do you do at that date? I mean, my friends tell me you should have let them clean it out. You can't no, let them do that. I, I would say, but that was only half the thing. If you're going to quit, what you have to quit is printing the money. So we, we quit handing out the gold, but then we said, we're just going to print money yep. and there's no restraint. So what you ushered in was a system in 1971, which created this huge, huge bubble, and that's where the real the but problem Congressman, is. Congressman, given okay. the bubble and given restraint, I mean, where would you stand now on regulation? Would somebody like you say less regulation, or after the crisis, would you say, well, actually, we well, do need tighter? Well, regulation. I want more regulations of different things. I want more regulations on Treasury, on, on the Congress, and on 
the Fed. But I what want to have banks? less uh, mischief by bureaucrats because they do a great deal of harm. We introduced a lot of regulations in the 30s and it just prolonged the depression. When we had Enron fail, we had Sarbanes-Oxley. That did harm because our businesses left our country. I don't like those kind of regulations. But you have to enforce regulations like, like contracts and bankruptcies. We ignore that. We don't, we don't follow the contract of money. So the government does everything opposite. They violate contracts and they don't use bankruptcies. They bail out people. So yes, you want the market to regulate. You want to get rid of bad Should investments and people who are bankrupt. Ron, really quickly, we're coming up on a hard break, but I've got to ask you about Afghanistan, Pat Buchanan, myself, other conservatives, very concerned about the so-called surge, concerned we're going to be in Afghanistan for another decade. What do you think? Uh, we'll be there for a decade or longer if the money holds out. But uh, because we we're doing exactly what Osama bin Laden wanted us to do, and that is get ourselves bogged down, spend a lot of money, and uh, get people you know discouraged about uh, being bogged down. At the same time, have an incentive to build up the Al Qaeda. So we're doing exactly the same. Okay. Yeah, the, the thing is, Al Qaeda is not even there. Yeah, but there's a lot of people who hate our guts, and right. they do it because we bomb them, invade them, and occupy them, and steal their oil, and all these things. So that that's that's going to uh, that that will continue. What would President Ron? Paul do? Bring the troops, have, the troops would have been home by now. I'd, I'd bring them home. Uh, I'd de you know, the famous saying, declare victory and come home. There's not much victory to declare. But I'd just come home. I'd come home from Korea and Germany. Save the money. This country needs some money. We're all broke. Quit printing the money. Save the money. Brother Buchanan. Okay, then. Brother Buchanan. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, we got the amen quarter over here. <laughs>